So we're here at the Leander Chamber of Commerce. We're about to meet with Bridget Brandt here and uh, talk a little bit about small business in Leander, how the chamber supports that, how citizens in the greater city of Leander uh, can uh, leverage the Chamber of Commerce, and uh, probably a couple other topics. Uh, we've known each other for a little bit, so I'm looking forward to that conversation. Come on in. Okay, we're here at the Leander Chamber of Commerce with Bridget Brand. Hi, everybody. Bridget was kind enough to give me a little bit of her time here today, and it's such a lovely day after all the yeah. snow. There's that still we had a little snow on our right? uh, on our walk up. <laughs> I wasn't sure if there was going to be like maybe a snowman out here, kind of melting I away. Or... I did build one. <laughs> It seems like the right thing to do. <laughs> Absolutely. With that much snow, I know in, in my experience, I've done a, a Texas snowman before, which was probably about this big and brown. So, you know, the fact that you're actually able to build an actual yeah. snowman this yeah. past weekend was really cool. It was really cool. Oh, yeah, I, I told my son, my uh, kids are old now and 18 and 15. And I was like, OK, I know y'all are not the age where you're super excited about this but we are gonna go build a snowman. And they were excited <laughs> actually, it turned out pretty good. And we got a real like pretty good sized snowman. No, so I lament the fact that my son actually just, he's 25 and he just went to Roanoke, Virginia. Uh -huh. He's visiting with his girlfriend out there Fun. and she just moved. Um, but I was lamenting the fact that he wasn't home because yeah, you there was so much snow in our subdivision <laughs> and you know, with empty lots, I was yeah. like, man, we can build it. We could really snowman. do this. We could make this uh, happen. Oh, well, the dog liked it. Yeah, the it was dog super liked fun. It. Yeah. So if you didn't notice, there was episode 1.5, which kind of showed you a little bit of the snow this weekend. So if you haven't had a chance, it's a short one. Take a look at that. Yeah. So anyway, uh, here we are at the chamber, as I mentioned, um, Bridget and I met Oh gosh, a few years ago yeah. now, it's been a few years, um, part of my initial foray into all things Leander uh, <laughs> was to find uh, avenues to participate civically. Yeah. And one of the first things that I was able to do uh, here in the city was join the chamber yep. and the Economic Development, Development Committee, Committee at the correct. time. So I spent yeah. about a year on that committee discussing economic development yeah. issues here in the city of Leander. It's a great way to learn things. Yep. Yeah, you know, we really had, uh, you know, some really great conversations during agree. that time. Um, but unfortunately, you know, those things, you know, we, it was the chamber and the city work a little differently. We do. Okay. <laughs> so from the chamber's perspective, just so that you know, in case you don't, the chamber is here to support small business in Leander. Yes. Right? Correct. Okay. So when it came to economic development, you really were kind of hamstrung because yeah. you couldn't do economic development activity because Correct. you're focused on small business yes, in Leander and exactly. they're already here. Yes, So, exactly. um, So that was a little bit of a challenge, but we did have great conversations and it really has led to a lot of yeah. great, mem uh, great memories for me, really great people in the city that I've yeah. met. Um, who may show up on this podcast later, yeah, awesome. I don't know. So, <laughs> but anyway, so um, here with Bridget, and uh, what I wanted to do is kind of frame this, Bridget, in a way that um, I know what the chamber does. Yes. And I think that there's people in Leander who have a general understanding of what the chamber does. Yes. <laughs> but I think it's helpful if we, as a city, have a better understanding of some of the mechanisms that we can use as citizens yeah. uh, and as small businessmen Smart. in the in the city. So, the way I wanted to frame this today was: um, we know that uh, the city has been supporting small business, and yes. with the pandemic, I'm sure there's been some challenges to that. So, I thought I'd start there. I'd yeah. say, let's talk a little bit about how the chamber pivoted yeah. to help small <laughs> business during the during yeah. the pandemic. Okay, so. Um, I'll answer all of those questions. I'll start with, traditionally speaking, the Chamber's role is really to serve business in Leander. That's our top foremost thing that we do. Um, we do that in a variety of ways, um, whether it be networking, leadership development, job development. Um, it, it could be any of those types of things, um, actual development. Uh, we tend to be not in in the realm of economic development we do some recruiting very limited that really is the city's aspect but where we really stand strong is in growing a business so let's say you opened a small business maybe in your home or maybe on a street market or maybe it was your first establishment today i had a meeting with a gentleman who's opening his second location now in leander and so we do a lot of that type of thing where that 
in, in framed in that way. Now, uh, from the pandemic, things completely, in March, everything changed. March 16th was our D-Day here, mm -hmm. and everything switched, and really our job during the pandemic was to provide information and training. Those are, I would say, the top two things we did. We actually were in the forefront of getting stimulus money into the hands of small businesses. So walking them through how to apply, walking them through how to get to the SBA. Most small businesses didn't even have a clue of who an SBA representative for our area was because you never needed that. Right. Uh, you never needed that type of support. Um, and then all the way to up to and including just even local small grants. We did a lot of fundraising in the Leander Strong campaign. You may have heard about that. Um, we raised several hundred thousand dollars to go right back into the hands of small businesses for um, utilities, payroll, any of those types of things. Um, we helped a lot of our restaurants stay open uh, by bringing them uh, specific restaurant grants um, that we were able to research and find for them to apply for. Um, and the list goes on and on and on. Uh, Zoom training, you know, until this pandemic, you, people now it's so common, right? But until the pandemic, how many of you didn't know even how to use Zoom? Yeah. A lot of our small businesses did not. In fact, I would say probably 90% of our small businesses did not know how to use Zoom. Yeah. Um, because it's not in their forte. Mm -hmm. It's not because, oh, they're, oh, they don't know how to do just a basic. No, it's because if your small business makes widgets, that's what you're really good at. You're really good at making widgets. So why do you need to know how to do a Zoom? Or maybe your widget was sold um, in a storefront and now you needed to be able to sell online. So we helped businesses transition to that. Uh, we helped uh, just, uh, it, the list goes on and on and on. And so you kind of think of, well, what do they do? Well, that changes every day, every second what right. we do. Our job is to help small businesses. And when they call us, and once we've created that relationship with them, they'll call and say, hey, you know what we really need today is help with a sign permit. What we really need today is I need to help with three employees. What we really need today is I need to be able to reach out to the SBA because we want to open a brewery. All three of those things actually happen today. Good. Those are three examples from today. Good. And so that's the type of thing we do. Excellent. Who knows? <laughs> no, I, and I think it's great. I mean, uh, you know, for me, just the insights that I've been able to be party to, yeah. um, really kind of working from the outside because, uh -huh. you know, I mean, I, yeah, I have my own small business, but that's a, you know, it's pretty self-manageable. But it's really interesting in talking to people and finding out how that went. So what, that you, you, when you were mentioning that, it brought up uh, in my mind um, the tax revenues in the city of Leander actually grew during the pandemic, yeah. which is kind of an unusual situation. It has was. a lot to do with the fact that you know people were you're stuck, you're you're at home, yeah. I and mean, you can't go anywhere. So you're not traveling up the road to Cedar Park and uh, <laughs> spending your tax dollars there. So um, nothing against Cedar Park, uh, yeah. wonderful people. Um, <laughs> but, but for us in Leander, that's always been a challenge is, yeah. is growing that tax revenue in the city. And um, since you mentioned it, um, one of the things I was curious about yep. was outside of Lowe's, because I could say, all right, Lowe's is probably a pretty big driver of yeah. that tax revenue. But was there is there any indication or do you have any ideas of where other businesses maybe I don't want to say prospered, but maybe did a little bit better than expected yes, with all of this? We had that a lot in Leander actually, which is pretty incredible when you think about it from a pandemic standpoint. Right. But it, it's because of that. Um, and of course, you know, you think of Lowe's and H E B. They're two very notable storefronts in Leander that have, that have done exceptionally well through the pandemic. But there are a lot of other small business mm -hmm. and I won't name them, I won't name them now just to keep, but I am very aware of that. Uh, good. And I know it because they're not qualifying for the second round of PPP. Okay. And so in okay. order to qualify for the second round, you have to have a 25% loss in that quarter. And we're now prepping businesses to help them with that second round for those businesses that did not do as well in 2020. 
And so um, it's about, I would, you know, anecdotally, I would say you have a 50-50 split right. where some of the businesses did really, really, really well. And on the premise of things like exactly what you're talking about, that people were staying home. So instead of seeing maybe an eye doctor in Austin by their work, they saw one locally. Good. Instead of seeing a okay. dentist by right. their work, maybe in Austin, they saw that dentist locally. And so you start thinking about all of those types of business in Leander and that really has an impact and you go well how does that impact sales tax well it impacts it because all of the things they sell so you go that the eyeglasses mm -hmm. and, and it on and on and on and so you start thinking about oh okay that does make sense once you start thinking outside of that little tiny small circle it does start getting real big real fast and, really, and that's really what it is it's super super interesting and and for, e, for, for me I look at it and I'm like that presents a very unique challenge for for the city yes. in that you know with all things being equal and you know I think a, a lot of people will say we see the light at the end of the tunnel and stuff yeah. like that I mean honestly you know we're trying to do our very best here with social distancing yes. we actually did this outside so that we could take the masks off yep. uh, even with mics but um, you know it's interesting to me is all right well since that's been a challenge for the city mm -hmm. and I, I don't want to put you on the spot I'm not gonna make I don't you, mind I'm make that's you make what I do <laughs> it's what I do <laughs> but, but that, that's been a challenge for the city because again we, it, it we're growing and yes. a good part of our population I'd say is still somewhat transient in nature just that either they just got here yeah. or they're moving here and they're used to going other places to spend their dollars yeah. um, how does the city maintain that how do we how do we keep that tax revenue I would say there's obviously once things open up and, and we're able to do what we want to do and go where we want to go yeah. people are going to want to go out and do things that's yep, obvious absolutely but how do we keep them going out and doing things here locally uh, I think the answer to that is by doing exactly what we're doing right now and that is by giving people the chance to try and experience our local businesses. Because when you do, you know, Dino came by today. When you meet Dino at Dino Shark's Burger. Shark's Burger, right? Yeah, when you meet All Dino right. at Shark's Burger, you want a Shark's Burger. And when you have a Shark's Burger, you go, oh my God, that's really good. Right. And when you meet Brandon, it walks it to you, same. So I think the answer to your question, and I get this question a lot, what's your goal for Leander? What do you want Leander to be? What's Leander going to be? And my answer is always very consistent, and it is, I want Leander to feel like a small town even though it's not going to be a small town. Right. Leander is going to be a very big town, and it's going to grow, and we're going to get all those economic development things that everybody wants because of the size that we are going to be. It is going to happen. Yeah. Period. Plain. Simple. Undebatable. Right. Gonna happen. And you and I both know that the projections are like, I don't know, 150, 180,000 180, people. For sure, it's gonna happen. And so, what you do to create that small town feel is, when people say they want a small town feel, they want people to say hi to them. They want people to, that they go to, to recognize them, to know them. They want people to know their order. They want people to know what type of t-shirt they like to buy at mm -hmm. the boutique. They want that experience of recognizing, oh, hey, Bridget, you know, nice to see you. Happy New Year. That whole experience. And we create that by doing it. Right. by being the community that supports local business. And we're seeing that more and more and more predominantly because of this pandemic. And my hope and my goal is that people realize how wonderful this is mm -hmm. because it really is wonderful and they continue to create that experience. That's one of our goals here, is to give people that experience when they come in to see us and they wanna know, well, wh who do I go for for a doctor now that I've moved here? Who do I go to fix my roof or to fix my plumbing? Or right. to, and we go, well, if you go to this person, not only do we know that they're good people, we also know them. Right. And when you know them, you will also like them. Right. And that is one of the values that we're able to bring to the community at large is well, that. It's funny that you would say that because that was really one of the driving forces <laughs> behind this. This whole project is specifically what Bridget was just talking about is to hopefully build those communication channels, which again, yeah. I mean, we're not we're not pointing fingers, but we know that there's challenges there yeah. in this. City Absolutely. and it's part of being a small city growing, growing into a big city. So you have those things, yep. uh, and we're not 
looking to blame and we're not looking to point fingers, but yeah. we're what I'm trying to do, and I know Bridget is trying to do, is we're trying to create solutions. Yes. Um, you exactly. know, in, in my line of the business, uh, you know, in sales, um, what you were talking about is the personalization of the process. Yeah. Okay, so people love that. And, um, sure. you know, I know from a sales perspective, if I go somewhere and somebody knows my name or yeah. knows what I order or recognizes me, or even at the very least, acknowledges my <laughs> presence, yes. it's a huge, You're it's right. a huge thing. Yeah, exactly. And as a small town, you can really, really capitalize on Absolutely. that because, again, you, you, you're doing a volume of business that is enough for you to make good money. And exactly. I think people here are successful. I, I see successful businesses in the city. Um, but it's not so big that you don't recognize the That's folks. That's right. You know, you see people. And, uh, and everybody here, my experience, I'm Texan, okay? So it's a little <laughs> different. It's different. Texan, Texan. If you're a Texan, you're friendly. <laughs> yeah, you understand you were, that. You were reared that way. Yep, yep. yep. And I mean, even though I was from East Texas. Doesn't matter. I was out in El Paso. <laughs> yeah. um, you know, I, I, I get that when I came to East Texas. Now, there's a few things that I still don't get, like sitting in your front yard in front of the garage. We didn't do that in West Texas, <laughs> so I still don't get that. But, you know, that's for another day. Yeah. <laughs> um, but the point is, is that, you know, it's about knowing your neighbors. And I, I, right. I, made, I made a very solemn promise to myself that when we moved here from Houston, where I knew a lot of people, but I didn't know everyone, I was like, you know what, I'm going to make every effort to know my neighbors, yeah. to know my community, and to be involved. And, yep. again, that's kind of what I'm trying to do here with this and, and introduce people yep. my way you know it's a very casual process yeah. but it's i want to introduce people to some of the movers and shakers and more notable like i said at the beginning this is about people places and all things leander yeah so uh, you know it's i awesome. want to concentrate on this city and, and really introduce people to people like you uh, and and as a small business owner obviously the chamber is where you go but <laughs> when you get there and you meet bridget it's like it's a different experience thank i mean you. i've been involved with chambers before and i was like wow this is very unique thank you. so you know kudos to you thank for that you. and all your efforts that. by the way i applaud your efforts thank all the you. time you know thank i'm a big you. fan thank you. um anyway so okay so let's move on to another topic um as a citizen if yes. i'm not a business owner yeah okay what benefit do i get from the chamber of commerce so the answer to that question is twofold one as a citizen you do benefit when, and I know you know this, but I know you're teeing know. me up for Teen it. Up. I know, I love it. But <laughs> you benefit when the business community is strong. And you benefit because your taxes will continue to drop because the business, the business, the rise in business lowers your taxes as an individual citizen. So you absolutely benefit from the work that we do here by being a citizen. That's bucket one of what we do here. The second bucket that we do here that really benefits a citizen, in Leander, we are completely separate from the city. We're a completely separate entity, but we have a contract with the city to promote tourism. And so through that, the Christmas Festival, the Old Town Street Festival, which by the way, was named the number one event to do and see in this area again. again. I think this is the third year. Uh, but when you- We need a banner for that. We do, I need to put a little <laughs> sign up. Uh, but when you go to those types of events, that's something that we are able to do as a citizen. But also when you go to those events, they're specifically designed to help uber micro small businesses begin to develop. So some of your favorite local businesses, and I'm not gonna name them because I don't know how they feel, about, but some of your favorite local businesses that you all talk about all the time, and I bet will be on this channel at some point, started at that festival. Yeah. And so when you start thinking about things like that, that's really what we do for citizens, but also, Underneath, I think about 90% of the people that live in Leander, there's a little desire to maybe start your own business. And so we're there for you when you get ready to do it. But our predominant goal really is to keep that business community vibrant. But from a citizen's perspective, that's how we can help you just in your day-to-day -day life. And you, we're doing it and you don't even know it's happening. Uh, but which, is, which is a problem. <laughs> I mean, and and I, I mean, I mean it in the very most yeah, sincere yeah. and best way. Yeah. It's a double-edged sword. It's a double-edged yeah, sword because, exactly. you know, I've been involved with a couple of the activities yeah. out here. And, um, you know, part of my role um, initially with the Citizens Advisory Committee, which is a completely separate committee from what I was doing yep. in the budget. But anyway, for another yeah. day. Um, <laughs> 
One of the things that we did is we took advantage of one of the festivals and yeah. we came out here and we surveyed yep. the people of Leander to just get a sense of, okay, well, what are what you, are you looking for? Yeah. Um, part of our objective was, you know, well, what is Leander, like you said, and, yeah. and uh, almost a, a branding initiative, I think was the general idea, yep. but it really gave us some really, really good insights. And yeah. I can tell you that I was completely floored by <laughs> how many people actually were open enough to chat with us. Not, yeah. I mean, we didn't have a booth. We were walking around, just kind of walking up to people and saying, hey, we want to take a survey, which is annoying, but <laughs> it was the only way we but could valuable. get it done. Yeah, yeah, it was valuable. But valuable. It was and valuable I, information. In that context, it really helped us kind of move a few other things forward, which yeah. I think long term are going to be very be beneficial to the way we do things. Um, my hope is that that's the case. Yeah. But, um, so, okay, so I'm gonna ask a personal favor here and you don't okay. have to answer me on camera, it's okay. But um, part of what I wanna do here is I do wanna highlight some of the more notable people and places and things. So okay. I'll ask for you to help maybe introduce me to some people that I don't know very okay. personally. I have a good, I think maybe six episodes Excellent. of people that I know. I love so it. once I get past the first six, I'm, I'm gonna need some help. So. I'm happy to do it. And that's what one of the things that we do here all the time is make those referrals. So if you are a citizen and you have a special place in your heart for Leander and there's something that you want to make happen, you can always reach out to us and we're happy to help. Oh my gosh, the number of projects that we have helped get started or advised or help forward, it doesn't have to be a chamber project for us to be a part of it, help it, promote it. We had a Girl Scout who was working on, and I apologize for all you Girl Scout followers, I don't know the name of the top badge or the top <laughs> ranking, but she was working on that and putting together a historical tour. And so we were able to help her find a location, we were able to help her uh, get people to come, and so we were able to just kind of help her accomplish that goal and so if you have things like that just like I'm gonna help Andrew we'll help you as well uh, that's really what we want to do is be here to serve the community and all of its needs so thank you for having me sure, here today no, I'm I excited about this project last little question go for it those stone markers that say Leander established in are there more than one Yes, there are. You have are. to tell me where they are, okay? I, I'll get you the whole I list. Know that. We got I need the to list know that. here. Okay. Done. That's a, two, that's a completely different episode. We'll do a way. little historical episode, yes, maybe. We will. I we love will. it. Well, thank you, Bridget. You're I welcome. Appreciate your time. Thanks Bridget for having me. Brandt Thanks, everybody. Here at the Chamber of Commerce. Um, there'll be some information, obviously, how you can connect with the Chamber uh, down below um, on YouTube in the subscribe. So hit that like button on Facebook, uh, subscribe to the YouTube channel, and uh, lean in, Leander. <laughs>